Today, the Irish Network Against Racism will hand over a petition, a petition with over 15,000 signatures demanding that the government make good on its promise to enact hate crime legislation. But is the fill the bill feasible or workable. I'm joined now by John McGurk, editor at Gripped Media and Ivana Batchik, Labour spokesperson on children. You're both very welcome. John, I will come to you first. Is this hate crime legislation, in your view, a good idea? No, it's not. Um, we have, good morning, first of all, Kira. Um, we have a couple of problems in this country with crime. Um, last week, for example, there was a woman before the courts on charges that she assaulted a homeless man in a case of mistaken identity beat him senseless. Um, a week later, he, he, he took his own life. Um, it was her 22nd conviction and not her first for serious assault. And Judge Martin Nolan handed down a sentence of 150 hours of community service. Now, if we want to talk about crime in this country and making things better, we could look at the repeated instances in the courts of people getting horrendously lenient sentences for very serious crimes. But we don't. And Ivana isn't on to talk about that this morning. She's on to talk instead about something called hate crimes legislation. Now, a hate crime is essentially a crime of motive. It is that if you and I, Kier, were both assaulted on the street at the same time in the exact same manner, and the person assaulted me because they didn't like my opinions, but you because they didn't like women, um, the person who assaulted you will be guilty of a hate crime because he was motivated by misogyny. Or if he assaulted a black person because he was motivated allegedly by racism or a gay person by homophobia. But the, the ultimate reality is that if you're assaulted, you are assaulted. The crime is not what you thought in your head. The crime is what you did. If somebody is punched in the face, they have been attacked. And that crime should be punished identically, no matter what the reason somebody has for for doing it or committing it. The difficulty with hate crime is that it doesn't make what you did a crime, it makes what you thought when you were doing the thing a crime. Okay, let, let, if, let okay. me bring, bring Ivana in on that point. Is John correct, Ivana, that, that we're actually penalising here motivation and that isn't how, how the, the courts should, should view crimes? Well, good morning, Kira, and I think it's very welcome indeed to see such momentum now from government towards legislating for hate crime. And there is cross-party consensus on this, and indeed there's been a long process leading to the introduction uh, last year, in April last year, of a general scheme of a hate crime bill which sets out precisely how one can legislate effectively against hate crime. And let's just say, you know, there's plenty of models in other jurisdictions, other countries, have well-established frameworks for uh, pr- pr- prosecuting hate crime. The, the, the you know the basis really is that this is not just about po- punishing motive. It's also clearly about punishing harm. So what legislation like the Irish proposal does is it would it would enable a judge in a court to take into account the fact that uh, a crime was motivated by hatred against a particular group. And indeed, it enables prosecutors to decide to prosecute. But you're taking an existing crime such as assault, for example, and you're en- enabling a prosecutor to say, I'm going to prosecute in this case because the evidence points to it. I'm going to prosecute for assault aggravated by prejudice. Okay, so a, and, an and John's point, fact. Ivana, that, that, that supposing he and I were both punched in the face on Grafton Street, they punched him because they just don't like him or because they, he, he said something they, they objected to, they punch me because I'm a woman. Should, should the person who punched me be, be, be penalised in, in a more harsh way because of that? Well, first of all, of course, there are lots of different ways in which sentences are handed down differently for what may appear on the face of it to be very similar offences. So if an offender has a, a long list of previous convictions, for example, there will be a more aggravated sentence. And an uh, aggravation by prejudice is simply another factor to be taken into account. Uh, and the reality is, I suppose, that for the victim concerned, yes, there is a difference if an assault is motivated by hatred. If, for example, uh, somebody feels they were targeted because of their race, their gender, their disability, then there is an additional harm to the victim and there's plenty of evidence for that and one might think here just of the awful uh, abuse suffered recently by the cast of The Lion King uh, you know well documented and yeah, reported okay. where they felt targeted because of okay, race let, well let me put that, put that to John that there is an additional harm if you're targeted because of being a member of a certain group John Ivana said a couple of things there she said first of all there's a consensus behind this which is Completely irrelevant. There's consensus behind lots of terrible ideas. There was consensus behind rent caps and look at that where that led in those recent daft report. Um, we have consensus in this country behind lots of terrible ideas all of the time. Ivana mentioned a very specific case 
last week, which was the racial abuse, the awful racial abuse directed at people um, who are cast members of The Lion King in the inner city. And of course, that one's getting the attention. But you, nobody talks about what happens in the inner city in Dublin every other day of the week, which is gangs of, of, of youths abusing men, women, gay people, straight people, all of the time. But we're specifically interested in this crime, apparently, because it had a racial aspect. And we're expected to believe it was a hate crime because they used racial epithets. When I think anybody who has been a victim of what goes on in the inner city all the time in this country knows that that was just the thing, those... I'll, I'll, forgive me for using the word guriers at this hour of the morning, threw at those people because it was the convenient thing to throw. Ivana basically admitted in her contribution there that what she ultimately wants to do is punish the same crime difficult, differently because of what she thinks or what she wants prosecutors to think a person was thinking in their head when they committed it. I mean, that is ridiculous. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, can, I, can I make one point? Because uh, uh, this is important. We are focused in this country entirely on the wrong thing because the ultimate problem is that when you commit these crimes, you don't end up behind bars. You end up with a suspended suspended sentence. I could list 20 outrageously lenient sentences in the, since the new year alone, but we don't care about those. We just want to constantly recategorize crimes and create new crimes which have no practical impact okay. on the real world. Uh, Ivana? Well, Kira, let's just say I worked in the criminal justice system for many years as a practicing barrister. I have a long track record of intervening on behalf of victims and indeed of working on criminal justice research. And indeed, I was elected as a TD for Dublin Bay South last year and very proud to be so and have taken up a lot of, of really serious issues on okay, behalf but, of people but living to, to in the John's South specific city point? who are victims well who are victims of crime and I think absolutely we need to take crime very very seriously and I have a lot of engagement with Gardaí and Kevin Street and Pierce Street and But to John's specific we're just out of time Ivana to John's specific point that you want to, to treat different the same crimes differently depending on motivation this isn't what, about what I want. The government have put forward hate, a framework for hate crime legislation. It's the culmination of a long process of engagement, of consultation and of examination of other jurisdictions. We all know the prohibition of incitement to hatred act. The existing legislation simply is ineffective and we know that guards are looking for, guardy, police authorities, are looking for a way of categorising crime that is motivated by hatred, for example, because of racism or because of all homophobia right. or okay. because of uh, misogyny. So we need this legislation. There is cross party agreement on that but it is a government proposal All and right. I look forward to working with government look, to bring it into We will that. have to leave it there unfortunately thank you both very much for speaking to us this morning that's John McGurk their editor at Grip Media and Ivana Batchik Labour spokesperson on children